Pro players spend countless hours learning and perfecting new techniques. Why? Good question. Because, well, they're useful. <laughs> they work. Even if you think, you know what, I'm never going to use that technique. You know what, this is what I got to say to you. You just never know. It might come in handy, you know, it might save your skin and even earn you a dub one day. What's going on, guys? It is your motivation guy. Make sure to follow me on my new Insta. That is at your motivation guy. Once again, at your motivation guy. Connect with me as soon as you can. I would love to hear from you. I'm not responding to anybody on my old Insta, only on this one. I want to help inspire you guys to be great in this game and also in life. So we're back again with seven more pro techniques you probably aren't using. You know, most of these are not new or anything like that, but still, you'd be surprised at how little use they see. Whether your goal is to get more kills, survive longer, or even win more matches, these techniques are sure to help you guys. Do you have a technique that you love to use all the time? Well, you know, I know a lot of players that, you know, use the grenade strat that you see some of the pros use. They just love blowing stuff up, and that just makes it easy. But let me know what your favorites have been in the comments down below, okay? And if you're interested in learning even more, hey, we've got plenty over at ProGuys.com. On our site, you're going to find dozens of courses teaching a variety of useful topics like aiming, come on now, building, and yes, even special techniques. You know, for instance, our secret building technique series takes you through the steps needed to learn all the moves that are definitely are going to give you an advantage on the battlefield. To start, follow the link in the description or visit ProGuides.com. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my favorite time. You know why? Because it's time to sit back, relax, and grab my favorite candy that I am addicted to and I'm proud of it. And it is that bunch of crunch. And let's get this going. So, a while back, you know, we showed you guys a not so well known technique to attack a wall from behind your ramp, right? That still works and definitely still has some use, but there's another application that we didn't discuss. You guys ready to hear that? That same trick can also be set up to hit a floor piece through a cone. Now, this is useful for tricking turtling opponents into thinking you won't be taking their top floor piece. To do this, okay, so approach the turtling opponents one by one from the top, right? Either place your own cone piece if they haven't yet, or remove it and just replace it with your own. Once you own that pyramid, edit it to reveal one of the corners, either the right or the left. Swing your pickaxe at the very edge of their floor piece, then quickly reset the comb. From here, and I mean right here, the enemy is going to think that you can't hit their floor. But if you swing on that harvesting circle, you can actually attack it through the cone. So do that, all right, and pull out your floor to replace it. Then edit through both to reveal your opponent for the kill. Now, why would you want to do this? Good question. Well, taking floor pieces can be really risky, right? Since your opponent might edit and go for a jump shot. Plus, with the whole coin flip mechanic, it might take a while to just brute force steal their floor. So this added confusion, where they think their floor is safe, can potentially make them turbo build the wrong piece. But the confusion doesn't have to end there, my friends. You can even go a few steps to even further puzzle your opponent. For example, now once you reach the stage where you close the cone, you can drop a ramp to the side as if you're about to drop on it for a wall replace. Land on it and swing your pickaxe once after a wall, right? Then jump back up and hit the floor piece marker. Place your own floor and edit through for the limb. When this is done quickly, it barely takes any extra time and you know what, it just really confuses your opponent as to what piece you're hitting. Unless they know the technique as well, there's no way your opponent is turbo booting a floor piece. And all this can be done within a few seconds, so there isn't too much wasted time. But just be warned, okay? Against brick and metal, you want to take the floor down to at least 150 health so that it only takes one swing to finish off. Overall, it's a great way just to deal with pesky turtles. Okay, so we've been seeing this next move used a ton by the pros this chapter, and that's the efficient ramp tunnel. Compared to the conventional tunneling methods, you're going to be saving a bunch of materials using this version. Very beneficial for solo end games and any time you're close to running out of mats. So to do this, you're going to need to start with the floor piece just like how you would any other tunnel. Then as your character reaches just before the halfway point of the floor, you look down and place a ramp. Got it? All right. You should end up underneath the stairs you place, not on top of them. Then place another floor to your right, walk forward, and another ramp. From here, you pretty much got it. You just keep alternating left and right to tunnel diagonally. This tunnel provides pretty decent coverage. The ramp can block shots from behind you and partially from above you. However, you know, some angles on the side is going to leave openings. You can always add a wall after each ramp for extra coverage, but you know what, that's optional. We noticed Booga has been using this tunnel a lot recently and, you know, he's just much more liberal with it. He just feels free with it. If he feels like he needs additional walls or protection, he can add them. But the method at his core is the same. Okay, guys, so just a couple of tips. Make sure you're not turbo building at any point during this, okay? 
If you hold Turbo Build, you'll place the ramps too early and it'll completely mess up your cover. So, my friends, place each floor and ramp with individual clicks for the best results. Also, you gotta understand that this tunnel leaves you much more exposed than the standard method, okay? Since you're only using two mats instead of the four or five that traditional tunnels take, there are slight gaps if your opponents have the right angle. So really, only use this if you're running low on mats or if you're just desperate to conserve. All right, guys, so this next move is a wall edit style known as the Kanata Classic. Named after the up-and-coming young phenom, Kanata for making it popular. It's relatively simple. All you're doing is, is really like performing a wall edit where you punch out everything but the bottom two tiles in the left column. To perform it as Kanata does, start with the top right tile, go all the way down, left by one tile, up all the way, and finish at the top left corner. This creates a tiny little wall in the corner, right? That bit is enough for you just to hide behind and go for jump shots or right hand peaks against players pressuring your box. After you shoot, you can quickly aim at that piece and reset the wall to get your cover back. Just make sure that you're positioning close to where the section will be before you confirm. So, why would you want to perform this over your regular wall edit? Hmm, well, first, you know what, it's unpredictable. Reading a peek with most other edits is pretty straightforward, but with this one, you can right hand peek or you could just go up for the jump shot, making it much harder for the enemy to predict. You know, another reason is to deny your opponent's pickaxe swing. The best time to go for an edit play is when the enemy is outside your box is swinging their pickaxe. The only problem is if you make the edit while they're mid-swing, who they might still hit your wall and replace it. Then you're left in a pretty, pretty uncomfortable, sticky situation. Since the Kanata Classic leaves a very minimum area for them to hit, there's a way higher chance their pickaxe won't connect. So that wall is just gonna stay yours. It takes some time to practice, guys, to get used to this, all right? Practice makes perfect. It really, really does. But once you get it down, man, it's a fantastic way to go for aggressive peaks. All right, so the next technique is a classic that you definitely need to start using, like, immediately, if you aren't already. It's the Rocket Launcher Shotgun Combo, which lets you get free damage in on pretty much any box up player. It's effortless, too, to be honest. All you gotta do is fire an RPG at a player behind some builds, pull out your shotgun, line up your crosshair, and fire right as the rocket hits. With the right timing, they can build fast enough to block that shotgun hit. Of course, you do have to have some sort of idea of like where your opponent is. If they're behind a fully built metal structure, this trick is not gonna work. Not only will the metal survive the rocket, but you know what, it's gonna be hard to spot your target as well. But if they're behind wood or something that's still building, the rocket devastates everything in its path so you can land a hit. It may seem like a simple trick, and it is, but we continuously see players with both weapons in their inventory not utilizing this trick. Even if you miss the timing, you haven't really lost out on anything. So next time you go to rocket somebody else's base and you're within range, remember to combo your shotgun along with it. All right, coming up next, another simple but effective trick. This one, we're calling the Better Turtle Ramp. It doesn't seem very useful at first, but it's advantageous in several ways. So, anytime you're playing defensively in your own box and someone like takes your wall, your first move is usually to jump and place a ramp, right? Come on, we all know that's true. But instead of putting the ramp forward, you should turn around, look down, and place it that way. So there are a few reasons why you want to get used to placing your stairs this way. First and foremost, and I know that, you know, I know a lot of people this has happened to, if your opponent replaces your wall and edits it open, the ramp you try to place sometimes ends up a tile right in front of you, meaning outside your box and not protecting you. If you turn around and look down to put one, it'll always connect in your box and keep you safe. Not only that, but the most reliable escape route when your wall gets taken is almost always editing out the back of your box. Placing the ramp this way can be done as you're turning around and it just saves a bit of time. A third reason is to block above you as well. If your cone and floor pieces get taken, a forward ramp isn't going to do anything unless you're toward the front of your box. So turning around and placing it this way protects you from any attack from above. There are plenty of more reasons too, but the main ones are just that it's safer. <laughs> Generally, it just covers more angles and it's just more intuitive for you when you're expanding out. Remember when Nick A30 was considered an editing phenom? Man, those are the days, right? But this knowledge of editing is still hot because recently, Nick showed this exclusive trick on his stream involving a peculiar edit we've never seen. All right, so let's just say it's the end game. You're holding the high ground and you wanna go for rifle shots on players rotating in. There is a massive risk editing your wall or a window open and going for shots. You might get sniped or lose a bunch of health from a third party player. So Nick came up with this flexible, cost-effective way of adding cover when you go for shots. 
So start by editing your wall open, then placing two cones in front, one at the top, one at the bottom. You edit three tiles on the bottom cone, right? If you're peeking left, edit everything but the bottom left tile. And if you want to peek right, then leave the bottom right tile unedited. Then edit the corner of your wall so that it lines up perfectly with the bottom cone. Place a pyramid in your box as well, okay? And edit the same corner as you did for your wall to create a ramp that adds more protection. Then anytime you want to go for another angle, you can reset the cones and your wall and set them up the other way. You know, it takes valuable time placing cones and editing them, so try to set this up in advance. Figure out what direction players are likely to rotate in from and put the cones down before the storm starts closing in. You don't want to be setting this up when there's shooting to be had, because by the time you finish, you might lose your opening. So always try to place the cones before engaging. This final move isn't like a specific technique as it is a general strategy, and that's shooting structures with your shotgun. You know, many people don't even know this, but the tactical shotgun actually does pretty decent damage towards structures. It does. The epic and legendary variants hit as hard or harder than a pickaxe with each shot. About 75 damage with the purple and 75 with the gold. The pumps do significantly less, so generally, you know you want to attack with this strategy. But why would you use one over a pickaxe, you ask? All right, let me show you in this example from Benji Fishing. He destroys his opponent's base with a rocket and unfortunately misses the combo shot. Now, if Benji were to walk up, pull out his pickaxe and go for the wall, his opponent would clearly see it coming, right? So instead, Benji waits until he's in wall placing range and uses his shotgun to take it. Since he's a bit farther away, the guy in the box doesn't even expect it. So Benji gets it for free and cleans up the kill. I mean, look at this, my friends. Benji even lines up his crosshair on the enemy before he shoots. Edit plays from turtles are super common. So indeed, you know, if they were to open the wall for a shot, Benji could just get lucky and land a free hit. Just another reason to use your shotgun this way. This does not only apply to walls, but also against ramps. Walking up the pickaxe stairs is predictable, but no one, I mean, no one expects the shotgun replace. Now, we're not saying that you should only use your shotgun against structures. A pickaxe attacks much faster and does more damage overall, Plus, it doesn't take up ammo you'll eventually have to reload. But any time a wall or a ramp is low and you're within replacing range, using your attack shotgun might catch your opponent off guard. All right, so to summarize, my friends, the seven techniques we showed you are the floor take fake out, the efficient ramp tunnel, the Kanata classic wall edit, RPG shotgun comboing, the better total ramp, Nick A's 30s protective peak, and using tack shotguns against structures. You know, although some of these are more difficult than others, they all require one word, I'm sure this is your favorite word, and that is practice. You have to ingrain these patterns in your mind if you want to perform these in a row match. So definitely spend some time in creative, you know, going over them and just getting to a point where you're just pulling them off like with ease. Well, hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Again, again, make sure to connect with me on my new Instagram, at your motivation guy. And posting up vids to help inspire you to not only be great in this game, but also in life. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like, sub to the channel, and remember to use code PROGUYS in the item shop to support the team. Once again, we'll see you next time.